So one of my favorite things to do is to go out to eat with my mom. Why? Love spending time with her because mom is great. But one of the real reasons why I love to go out to eat with her is because it's almost always a show. And what do I mean by that? My mom is very particular. She's great. Shout out to my mom. If you watch this episode, you know I love you. Um, but my friends and I have, over time, had these running jokes that, like, you take her to a restaurant, her food's not going to be right, right? Uh, and it's always going to be sent back. <laughs> She's one of those people. She will, in fact, send the food back. So we were at Chipotle one time. This is when I was at UVA. We go to Chipotle. And we were going through the line, and it's like, if you've ever been to Chipotle, um, this was back when it was like still really, really popular, so there was a lot of people in the line, like the lines were just always super long, kind of like how Chick-fil-A is now. So as we're going through the line, I think we got towards the end with like the sour cream and like the corn and the, the lettuce or whatever. And we got to the end, oh yeah, cause she, she yeah, that's exactly what it was. she asked for extra lettuce. And so the person like put some lettuce in it and she was like, no, I asked for extra lettuce. And the person just kind of like, like threw it down, like literally just kind of threw it. And she looked at them, looked at us. And I looked at my friends. I was like, something's about to happen. <laughs> and so she said, "Uh, uh-uh, I need you to remake my entire bowl. I didn't expect for that to happen. I said, what? <laughs> and my friends were like, what and the, the um the the i guess the person behind the the counter um the worker or the employee uh he or she i think it was a he he was like what ma'am and she was like you did not make that with love i don't want to eat that and i just remember busting out laughing just be like what and she had them sit there and remake her entire chipotle order <clears throat> and this time they gently gently kind of placed it in there sprinkle of love and she was like you did not make that with love and we were like well are they gonna make it with love this time <laughs> like what is the difference and you know there's a whole lot of stories i could tell about going out to eat with my mom um but the 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 moral of the story is she doesn't want anything that's given to her that doesn't seem like it's given in excellence or in love or in good condition and the moral of this story is when it comes to your creativity with you using the gift that God has given you, you too should also do it with love. So welcome back to another episode of the Creators World podcast, uh, where I am here, your host, Justin Reeves. I am excited to dive into topics to help re renew, refresh, revitalize, um, and all the other positive <laughs> reword, reset, rejigger, re-energize, blah, blah, blah. All the words, you for your God-given calling to fulfill the purpose that God is giving you. This is for Christian creatives and entrepreneurs. So I'm excited to dive in the topic today of the, the risk of indifference or like the cost of indifference. So indifference is something that happens to us more than we realize it, right? Like the signs and the symptoms are not often detected, but they are there. So indifference, what does that really mean? Well, I guess, you know, we'll have a, we'll, we'll get the definition. Cause I was going to give you a definition, but I don't really want to give you mine. <laughs> Indifferent means having no particular interest or sympathy, unconcerned. And so the problem with being a Christian entrepreneur or creative, <clears throat> if you are indifferent, that means that you are truly not thinking about the goodness of God that he is trying to show forth through your gift. And that is dangerous, right? It doesn't mean, and I, I think we talked about this before, it doesn't mean that you work in a church necessarily. It doesn't mean that you uh, you have to work in ministry. It's whatever you're doing, right? And you don't want to be indifferent in whatever that thing is. So what does indifference look like? Indifference, let's say you're a musician. Let's say you are someone who, you know, sings, plays music, whatever. Indifference looks like you just showing up, right? But not really putting forth your best effort or not caring what the result is. If you're a leader, indifference as a leader is a big thing. If you're leading an organization, leading a team, leading a department, your indifference can just look like just making sure the job gets done, but not really caring how the job gets done. So it can, you know, if you have to make sure that you hit a five out of 10, but you have 10, then indifference will just get you just to that five, right? Maybe that six, but indifference isn't gonna get you to the height of the, the nine or the 10 or whatever the case is, right? Indifference 
um, in school. That's that's a thing in whatever assignment that you're giving indifference and even a podcast like not preparing, not being ready to bring your notes together, not being ready to give the best quality because you're just like, you know what? I'm just going to do it because it needs to be done and you get tired of it. So, like, what are the things that cause indifference? Tiredness causes indifference. Um, that's one of the things we'll go through the four things that cause indifference. Tiredness is one of them. If you are at a point where you are either physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually tired or something, more than likely, you will get indifferent. And it will show. You will start to look bitter. You will start to look unhappy. You will start to just be at a point where, like, it's it's not what you want to do. And the fact of the matter is, tiredness is not necessarily a bad thing, right? Like, tiredness is natural. We're not made to go and go and go and go. We need to rest. And that's something that hopefully I can model better <laughs> um, for everybody and just do better in general for me. But we're not meant to go like Energizer Bunnies. We actually need to take breaks. We need to make sure that we are re-energizing ourselves, that we are revitalizing ourselves. So tiredness can lead to indifference because you just don't have the energy, right? You may love a thing, but you really might be at a point where you're just like, man, I just don't have it in me today. I think about days that I've gone to the gym where I'm just like, I'm exhausted. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. I'm, I've been up doing whatever. Um, you know, my muscles are tired from yesterday's workout. I just don't have it in me. And indifference causes you to be sloppy. Indifference causes you not to give your best. So sometimes when you're tired, it's just not the time for you to do stuff, right? The second thing that can cause indifference is misalignment. So this is when something is just not for you. If you are misaligned, that does not mean the thing that whatever you're working for is bad. That just means that you are not meant to do whatever that thing is. And this comes very often. I think um, in our creative pursuits, a lot of times because we are small businesses or, or whatever it is that we're doing, we are at a point where... Um, we have to become like a jack of all trades and some of us are meant to be jack of jacks of all trades some of us are not so like for example with me i'm not necessarily a graphic designer but i've learned graphic design because i like marketing i've learned marketing because i like events so someone could easily come to me and say hey i want you to be my graphic designer does that mean i know how to do it possibly i can i can get around canva and the adobe suite like anybody else i am not do not come asking me to design. <laughs> do not come asking me to do it. But a lot of times that will cause misalignment. A better example for me is that websites. I've learned to build websites. I know how to build websites. I do not like building websites. My website currently needs a refresh right now, and I need somebody to do it for me. <laughs> and I just don't want to. Um, and that's a project for this week. I hope by the time you see this, I have a updated what you won't actually i hope the next episode you will see <laughs> an updated website um but i know how to build them i know how to get stuff together i know how to use the wix templates i know how to do the things right but i do it for me for survival because i know for as a business i need a website i need it to be updated i need to be able to put whatever i need to put out there but when i had a, someone who reached out to me was like hey can you do a website for me it was misalignment for me to take that gig. To be completely honest, I did it for the money. The money was not a good enough motivator because as I was doing it with the try the, the like the troubles that come because that's just part of technology, right? Me putting it together, I was just like, yo, I don't want to do this. And it and it and it showed and it was a problem. So it wasn't a problem with necessarily my skill. It wasn't a problem with what they were asking for. We just did not need to mesh. Like, we can't be, as my cousin used to say. Um, the next thing is that your time of doing that thing is up or over, right? We talk all the time about seasons changing and whatever. And even last episode, we talked about, like, everything on earth has a time because God is set to be. Christians have a hard time as entrepreneurs quitting things because we feel like God wants us to do something until eternity. The thing about it is, is that Jesus probably spent, well, more than half of his life, depending on what time he started his career. But he definitely spent more time as a carpenter than he spent in practical like ministry, as we would call it. Right. He had his three years that he was 
um, walking the earth and teaching, preaching, healing, all the above, right? So that's from 30 to 33 when he died on the cross. I'm guessing probably somewhere around 15, 18, he started working with his dad as a carpenter. So he had a lot of time doing that. Now, I'm not going to put anything on Jesus. I'm not going to put anything on whatever. But he got to a point where he was no longer doing carpentry. He was putting people together. He was building people up. He was building the kingdom. But he was no longer building sheds or playgrounds or rocking chairs or horses or whatever that he was building back then. And I think we forget that things can come to an end. And that things coming to an end does not mean that you failed. Things coming to an end does not mean that that organization and that thing has failed. It just means that your time for that thing is up. But a lot of us continue to stay in things way too long. And we stay in it because of the money. We stay in it because of loyalty. We stay in it because we just feel like it's the right thing to do. Or we stay in it because we don't know how to leave. Like sometimes we don't know how to leave a thing, right? Churches are like <laughs> um, almost infamous in not a good way. Um of not having exit plans for things because uh, jobs too, like you can be in the same job for forever. They may or may not promote you, right? But as a at the church, you might be a director, you might be a youth leader, you might be whatever, and it just goes on and on and on and on and on. There's no real off ramp for it, right? And the same thing goes for your business. If you keep doing your business over and over again, like there may be a point where God is saying, hey, you need to shift to something else. But if you just like, no, nah, this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm comfortable. It can cause eventual indifference because you're not supposed to be there anymore. Right. So like just because you've been a great youth leader, just because you've been a great, you know, finance director, just because you've been a great creative director, you've been a great photographer. It might be time for you to move to video. It might be time for you to move to the young adults or the children or the seniors or whatever the case is. Right. Get to the point where you leave that thing and i just i want us to think about this too because we also put these arbitrary time limits on things like oh i'm going to work in this position for five years who who says you're supposed to do it you might need to do that for like three years you might need to do it for three months you might be in a position for three days and god is going to tell you okay cool you've been the director of this cool now now you know sit down and it might hurt. <laughs> you might have to grieve the process, right? But that might be what God wants from you in that time. Um, and then the final thing that I have listed, at least, that can cause or contribute to indifference is creative differences and that you just no longer believe in a mission. So this one is a little different. This one has confrontation with it, has a little bit of hopefully healthy confrontation and tension. Um, and so this is more of a, of a time where you are in a situation and things have changed. Maybe the leader has changed. Maybe the mission statement or the values of the organization, the team, the department, whatever it is, have changed. And they no longer connect with your core values as a Christian creative or an entrepreneur. Now, here's the thing. When you say that, you think of like, you know, you're the creative director for for an artist and all of a sudden they start to do you know really vulgar secular music so you feel like you can't be a part of that anymore that's like an easy example <laughs> that can lead to you just separating but i'm talking about the very subtle nuances that like an organization was committed to serving um an affected community in your um in your neighborhood or in your city and they have suddenly shifted to now uh, help that same affect the community but in a different city or uh, across the seas or in a different country or or changing the demographic altogether or maybe changing the ethnicities that you're targeted whatever the case is so they're still doing good work but you are no longer aligned with what they're doing or you don't agree with the changes that they're doing so it's a little similar to the second one of misalignment but it's different in the case that now there's something that has changed and there is something that causes tension in whatever you're doing right and so this one is really important because if you continue to say it's something that you don't agree in eventually it's going to show right the other ones are almost I won't say they're all they're all hard and they're all things that we need to get past, but they are you get to a point where this one that the tension can come out and it can create an unhealthy exit or a blowout or something that you don't want to like go back on the organization right because you because you want to 
make sure that your name is good. I, the Bible says like a good name is worth more than rubies. Um, so you want to make sure that whenever you leave, you leave on good terms. But so the, the biggest thing with this is that now not only are you indifferent, but now you're also in indignant <laughs> or like you're at the point where you're like, man, I can't stand this. Like you're talking negatively about whatever that organization is. And, I, and that's one of the biggest signs that you know that something has shifted when your um, the way that you look at something is, has totally changed. Like, man, I used to love this church. I used to love this organization. I used to love this artist. I used to love this job. I used to love this task. But now I'm just like the very sight of it makes me sick to my stomach, right? That causes indifference, which causes tension after a while. And all of this is important because as you are going through life, things change. People change. And I think as creatives, as entrepreneurs, we need to give ourselves and the clients that we serve grace because everyone is changing, right? People are evolving. People are getting better. Some people are getting worse. Um, you're getting worse. Sometimes you're getting better. But it's a constant movement of things happening in life. And we need to be able to say, you know, it's okay that I don't like this anymore. It's okay that this no longer serves me, right? I think we feel this guilt and feel like we're supposed to be somewhere for forever. And it's not the case. The Apostle Paul literally went to different churches, setting them up and moving on to different cities, right? That doesn't make him a bad person because he left. That was the call that was on his life. He was called to plant and move on. If people had decided that like, oh, Paul, you need to stay in Philippi, or you need to stay in Rome, you need to stay in Athens or what, like wherever it is, we would not have the other letters and we would not have some of the spreading of the church, right? So you leaving is actually like in some situations, a good thing because that when Paul left, that left room for somebody to come in and become the elder, the pastor, what we would call a pastor, um, the elder, the pastor, the leader, the overseer of the church. And now they have somebody who is meant and called for that like position, right? But for us, we stay so long that we now are just like, you've done everything that you can do. There's no more that you can pour into this situation. And now you're just resenting what what God has given you in the beginning. And that's not what he wants. He does not want that indifferent. He doesn't want you to be indifferent in the first place, but the indifference can turn into resentment. It can turn into like just detesting whatever the situation is. And that is not good. So with this indifference, one of the biggest things, like, what what do you do to combat it, right? So with the tiredness, you rest. You take a break. You you take however long you need to get back to it. And here is the hardest part because we're talking about creativity in business. There is oftentimes money attached to whatever you're doing. And so that makes it very difficult to step away from whatever it is, the thing that's causing you to become indifferent. What I will say to that is that please don't ever get to a point, and it's easier said than done, right? Finances are finances. Do your best in your creative pursuits to not get so dependent upon one stream of income. Like if it's your, your nine to five W2 job, that's is nothing you can really do about that, right? Typically those jobs are gonna be the things that pay the majority of your bills, unless you do like part-time or, or whatever it is, or you're doing really, really well in entrepreneurship and, and you're making more. Uh, but for me, that is my main source of income. And, you know, we gonna make it do what it do. But my, like, my other streams, my, my business, the other clients that I work with, I try to make sure that not, like, one client does not overtake all the others, right, in a sense. Um, and sometimes you can't do anything about it. But, like, if I took away one client, it wouldn't kill my business if, if necessary. Like if I need to tell, you know, this person, hey, I need to step away for a month. I need to stay step away for a week. I need to do whatever. And then there may not be pay associated with it, right? Because there's generally not pay time off in your business unless you're a really, really good negotiator. Um, you, you get to a position where you're kind of like, okay, I've got to take the hit. Again, easier said than done, but that's practical advice as we try to go forward in these things that like, you don't want to get so dependent on something. Um, live beneath your means, right? Like if you get a new client, don't change your spending habits to accept that client. Just let that all filter into your savings. Let that all filter into something to pay it down debt or something so that if you ever need to cut it down, like you have an emergency fund or all of your expenses somewhere else and your debt's cut down so that like 
you know, if something goes wrong, you don't have to worry about paying your bills and your debt type of thing, right? I hope that makes sense. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I just really want us to get to a point where we can get through the indifference. Because this is something that I suffer through often. There are a lot of things in life that I go through and just go through the motions. And the thing about it is people know that, right? So if you are a high performer, which hopefully the people that are listening to this podcast are, uh, if you are someone who takes pride in your creative craft and your output, which I hope that you do, I hope that you're excited about what you do, right? Um, when you start to get to a point of indifference, it's going to show, right? The way you sing a song, play a song when you're excited about it is almost always going to be different than when you're just going through the motions, right? I've had, I've been in, <laughs> telling myself, right? Because that's what you do. I've been in praise team rehearsals where I just wasn't feeling it that week. And a uh, praise team leader told me and she was like, you know, if you just want to go home, you just go home because you're, you're not really here right now. Like, where's your mind right now? What's going on? And that checked me because it was like, okay, you're right. Like, you're absolutely right. I'm, I'm not, I'm physically here, but I'm not mentally here. My mind is not here. I don't care about this right now. Like, this isn't where I want to be. I gave um, an event plan one time for one of my events. And I was just in a space where I just didn't feel it because I was frustrated with how things were going. And I presented a plan to uh, one of the people who helps me out. And she was like, this is crap. <laughs> she was like, this is this is not JR Group um, quality. Like, do something different with this. And I was like, at first I was like, who are you to tell me? But looking back at it, she was absolutely correct. And we, we did end up doing it. Um, and we kind of recycled for another time. Um, but that's what needs to happen, right? Like, you need to to have that level of, okay, somebody, like, I am in a place now where I just no longer, I just don't care, right? I need to get back to a place of caring, because caring is important. <laughs> um, so what do I do to do this? And, of course, I want to always have, have us have scripture that backs up this indifference. And I want to take us to Colossians 3.23. It's one of the things that people talk about a lot. They quote this a lot, but it says, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Knowing, verse 24, knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the inheritance of your, as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. So um, I think that's extremely important because we have to know that God desires our best output, right? When you were get when uh, in the Old Testament, when they had to go and give sacrifices, they had to give it. It was spotless. It was it was like a perfect sacrifice, right? So it couldn't have broken limbs. It couldn't look crazy, right? <laughs> it couldn't be the smallest. Like it had to, it had to be good in order for God to receive it. And while we don't have to physically sacrifice things anymore. Jesus came for us as the perfect sacrifice. Like in John chapter one, uh, John the Baptist says something along the lines, paraphrasing, it's like, now comes the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. Um, like he, he who knew no sin became sin, right? Um, so Jesus was the perfect spotless sacrifice for us. So God sent his only son, his best son, the best option, the only option for us. And so when we are using our creative gifts, we need to make sure that we are putting our best foot forward. We're using everything that we've got to put towards whatever the assignment is that's been given towards us. And I know that sounds so trivial, right? And this one, you might be like, man, Justin, like this is simple, but we have to examine ourselves often because there are times where we literally do the least, <laughs> like we do the least amount possible. And I know I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one. I like literally, and, and to be honest, I would love if you leave a comment, if you agree to be like, yeah, I've definitely done the least. Like <laughs> I've, I've just, I've just skated by, um, to help me know that I'm not alone. That would be really, that would be really great for anyone who's watching this. Um, but but it's it's just factual, right? Like there are times where people just where I, we, you probably have just been like, this gets me by. Like the term C's get degrees. It's true. <laughs> it is true. Um, but like, do you want to just be known as a C average student or do you want to excel? Right. And so in our 
these creative exploits that we have and these um, whatever we're doing. Like, make sure you're putting the best foot forward. And as Christians, we have the best product that we're marketing, that we're putting forth, that we're explaining, that we're showcasing, which is Jesus Christ, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is its redeeming power and its saving power and all of the things that go along with that. So why would we ever dare want to be indifferent about that, right? And it's easy to do it because people suck. It's just a fact, right? Serving Jesus is not hard. I love Jesus. I know Jesus loves me. He did so much for me. He doesn't have really have to do another thing for me. I know like people say that all the time, but like he really did his big one on Calvary. But people make it challenging to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> but we cannot let people stop us from giving God what he is due. And you might be in situations where, and and like I'm staying on this because I just feel like like church creatives are a special part of the niche that I feel like I want to serve. So if you're a church creative, I would love to talk to you. I would love for you to DM me on Instagram. Like I would love to hear your experience. I talk to a lot of church creatives all over the country on a regular basis about their experiences and what we're all going through and the common sufferings <laughs> and, the, and the triumphs that some people are having and different things like that. Um, but I think like, even if you're not necessarily working in the church as a Christian entrepreneur, if you're a clothing um, line owner, if you uh, are just a Christian creative in general, like when you're putting stuff forward, it needs to exemplify the perfection that God gave us through his son, Jesus Christ. Now we're never going to be perfect. Nothing you put out is ever going to be perfect. So don't, don't take this as like, I don't want to be indifferent. So now I need to be a perfectionist and I need to make sure that nothing's wrong. That's, that's, don't go to the extreme there, right? But what I will say to you is do the very best you can with what you have. So practical examples, when it comes down to you putting forth your creativity, let's say you are putting out, um, like, let's just say you're putting out a graphic or, or a podcast, right? You're putting out a podcast and your audio is bad. Like, People for, will forgive bad video for whatever reason to an extent, but people don't like bad audio. So if it's super, super hollow, if it's like if there's just too much distortion, if there's whatever, if it's too low, it's too whatever, people don't want it, right? And so if you're doing a podcast about whatever, it could just be life. Like it doesn't have to be in, inherently directly Christian, but people know you as a Christian, they subconsciously tie that back to you being a Christian. Like being a Christian, like the Christian adjective, um, at, that goes in front of entrepreneur or creative, like it's one of the few adjectives that like has such a stigma that goes with it because the people expect you to essentially be, per be perfect because that's what religion has kind of taught and like showcased, um, which is crazy in and of itself, but that's not what we're discussing today. <laughs> um, but like, they're going to look at you and be like, oh, wow, you you slipped up or you're not consistent or you don't care so much or you're not putting out music anymore. Or you said you're going to do content and I thought Christians didn't lie. I thought Christians didn't do this, blah, blah, blah. They don't, they don't do that to other people as much, but they're going to do it to you, right? And we are supposed to be called out. We are supposed to be examples. We are supposed to be um, the royal priesthood that's peculiar, that's set aside, all of the but like, again, not doing all that <laughs> necessarily today. But what I want to just get to is at this point, make sure that if you feel indifference coming and it does, that you take a step back, that you assess the situation and say, am I, am I misaligned in this? Am I, am I the drama? <laughs> is somebody else the drama? Like, do I need to leave? Do I need to exit the situation? Like, what's really going on here? Like, what's really good in this situation or what's really bad? And I think that that would just help us get to a point where we can end and transition things better because if your indifference is going to last and, and sometimes that's the case because your season is over for it let it let it be known so that somebody else can move into it because this is the last thing i'll say about this your indifference but your continued indifference can mess up somebody else's situation 
What do I mean by that? If you are in a position such as a director of an organization or a team or whatever it is, and you no longer really care about the mission and vision of that team, but you're just there to collect the check or you like the status or, or you just don't know how to let something go, there's probably somebody that is in your organization, on your team, or coming up behind that wants to have that position out of pure intentions. He or she may love you know, the creative arts. He or she may love music. They may love production. They may love writing. They may love whatever. And you're essentially hogging that spot. And it's one thing for you to occupy that spot, but you're doing a great job, right? That's something that can inspire people. That's something that can make them want to be a part. But if you're in that position and you're not doing well, or you're just going through the motions and you're just kind of there, one, that makes people not want to sign up to help. That also makes people who are there not want to step up because then there's, then they kind of think, my man, once you get that position or once you start doing whatever, then you become as angry and bitter as such and such. Like, I don't want that. Or three, they may move on because they're waiting to take that. And instead of them going in, in that organization, now they're going to go to some other church or some other business or some other artist or some other client, whatever the case is, and they're going to move on. And now your organization suffers because they still have to deal with you and your bitterness and your craziness <laughs> and your inefficiencies and your indifference. And the answer was sitting right there the whole time. And eventually, and this is... This is something, and, and maybe we'll flesh through patience. Well, we know. We definitely will flesh through patience as an entrepreneur in one of these episodes soon. But, like, people shouldn't have to be patient forever, right? And you shouldn't have to be patient forever. So, all in all, when you feel indifference coming on, decide if you need a break or you need to sever the cord. That simple. The last thing I ask you to do, <laughs> so in the in the chat, in the comments, whatever, I would love for you to uh, let me know that I'm not alone, that yeah, I'm not the only one who's ever felt indifference in whatever pursuit that you're in. But also, I would love to know your Chipotle order, um, and I would love to know that because I'll actually be doing a like a raffle or giveaway, um, and I'll buy you Chipotle. So, if you know somebody who wants free Chipotle, send them this video. Tell them to do the things that they need to do. They have to be subscribed to the page. Um, and I will send out, figure out how to send that out by the end of October. And somebody will be getting free Chipotle. $15 worth. So that means you probably can't add guac. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's it for today's episode. Um, would love to... Yeah, keep this going. So yeah, love, love if you would like, share, subscribe, follow me on social media at the create as well. Also underscore the Justin Reeves underscore. If you go to my page, you'll see all the things that I do. Um, the create as well is a huge thing. It is a passion. It is um, what I feel like God has put me on the earth to do in the very unique situations that I've been in, all the experience that I've had. And, and in these next couple episodes, I actually want to talk a little bit about myself, which is not something I like to do. Um, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about all the stuff that I've done um, so that you can kind of see where I'm coming from with this and kind of get some of that. So, yeah. So follow me, all the above, uh, so that you can stay in contact. We have in-person events. Uh, one will be coming up in February, actually. Super excited about that, which is a ways away from when this will come out. But who knows when you will watch this. It might be the very next week. So anyway, <laughs> love you guys. And I will see you the next time.